Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I will show you how I'm gonna use the Rococo gear to uh, make some animation easier for this short film. Let's just dive in. I started by jumping into my smart suit and then I also put on my gloves. Then I just added the battery and I was ready to go. Inside of Rococo Studio I had to connect with the suit. Both your suit and your computer has to be in the same Wi-Fi. I'm having some trouble with my Wi-Fi at the moment, so by holding down this button on the suit, the suit can then create its own hotspot, which you can connect to instead. There are some limitations to this hotspot, and the connection is not as good as if you were connected to the Wi-Fi. But don't worry, I will fix my Wi-Fi for the next video. So now I was connected, and I just had to calibrate, and then I was ready to create some mocap. As I said in my previous video, I had the Smart Suit 1. This is the Smart Suit 2, and I am really impressed by the improvements. The tracking is really precise, even though I'm using the suit's own hotspot and not running on the Wi Fi, and it's just super simple to set up. I only recorded this scene a couple of times, and then I was quite happy with the result. Always spend a little bit longer on creating a great recording instead of just rushing it. It will simply be way less work in post. I then trimmed the animation to my liking and then I did some post work in the studio app. Which is mainly making sure that the feet are locked to the ground in the right places. And that is super easy to do inside of the app. Then I just exported the scene as an FBX file. And here inside of Blender I just have my character rigged with a Miximo rig. I then imported the Rococo FBX file. And then I just used their free Rococo add-on for Blender to retarget the animation. So you start by picking the source rig, which is the rig with animation, and that is the Rococo FBX. And then you pick the rig which you want the animation applied to, which is my character. Then you press build bone list, and usually it will do a great job. Then you press retarget, but sometimes it will give you this error, which is just because it renamed some wrong bones or maybe duplicated a bone. And it will tell you which bone is the problem, then you just fix it and retarget again. And there you go, we have some mocap retarget. You can then delete the Rococo FBX and then just watch your masterpiece. And just like that, in no time we have this great animation in Blender. But wait, we can do better. So recently I was also sponsored by Cascader. So let's just improve this mocap we just did in Cascader. So because Rococo did a collaboration with Cascader, you can just drag and drop your Rococo mocap into Cascader and they will automatically recognize the Rococo character and they will apply their amazing rig to it. And Cascader's rig will indeed give us a lot of great options. So right now this animation consists of a lot of keyframes, but Cascader allow us to unbake these keyframes and then reposition, animate and adjust the animation afterwards. So inspecting my mocap, I noticed that my arm is jittering a bit, which is quite annoying when you look for it. But we can fix this very easy. So we just select the frames that are the problem, which is around from 0 to 60, and then I press the unbake button. Cascader will then automatically select the key poses of the animation and do some new interpolation between these keyframes. And just like that, we got rid of the jitter. I then just selected a new range of frames and repeated the process. When I had around 90 frames and the key animation, I moved on to the next step, which is adding in the physics assistant. And this is another great feature of Cascader. By default, we only have the physics corrector enabled. This will make sure that your animation is obeying basic physics. And this is especially helpful if your character is jumping around and doing all sorts of crazy motion. But for this very subtle animation, we need to enable some of the other features to see a big difference. We also enable smooth trajectory, smooth rotation, compensation motion and secondary motion. I start by setting the values quite high so that we can really see a difference, but you want to play around with these settings until you get a result that you like. And just look at that organic motion that we're getting now. Just the wrist and how wavy it is, right now it's definitely too much, but just look at the result, it's amazing how big of a difference this does. And once again, I just want to say that this is a very subtle animation, so the mocap is actually quite good as it is, but just adding these subtle motion is really good. If you had an animation which was jumping around, doing high kicks and stuff like that, this physics assistant will change your animation so much and it will look amazing. So because my character has actually been rigged by Miximo, Apparently you can just drag and drop your character into Cascader and then you can just say yes to the basic settings and you will get a pretty decent rig. So I then just snap my physics assistant to my character so that the animation gets applied. Then you just select the timeline keyframes, go into edit and select retargeting copy. Then you go into the scene with your character, select enough frames on the timeline, go to edit and press retargeting paste. And there we have it, we have the animation applied to our character. And this looks pretty good. Now we can just export it and bring it into Blender. 
Oh, whoa, whoa, but wait. Inspecting this model, I see that my model has a different scale than my Rococo character. This means that his hands is actually clipping with his pants, and this does not look good. But don't worry, let's fix it with ease, using another feature in Cascadeur, called Interval Editing. So we just select the whole animation and press on the red icon, and this will activate this red square around the viewport. We can then adjust the pose however we like, and it will affect the pose throughout the whole animation. This is very awesome. And just like that, his hand is no longer clipping with his pants. And now we can export to Blender. So here we are in Blender, with this very basic scene setup, and then I've just imported the animation from Cascadeur as an FBX file. I've also added in the ice cream with some different animation, and this involves constraints and some shape keys, which is a bit more difficult, so I will save that for another video. But one thing we can add is some facial animation, and we will do that using Rococo's facial animation features, which involves using your phone. In my case, my iPhone. So here I am with the Rococo head rig. It is a super handy rig, though you don't have to use it to record facial motion capture, it's just really handy and you get some great results. But I've managed without for a year and it was fine, but I have to say, it is way easier with the rig. And here we are in Rococo Studio. And once again, you have to connect your iPhone and your computer to the same Wi-Fi. And then this little window will pop up in the studio app where you can connect to your phone. Then you just have to say allow on your phone and there you go. Let's record some motion capture! This facial mocap took a couple of tries to get just right, but it was a really fun process and I enjoyed every single bit of it. Once I was done with the recording, I exported the scene as an FBX file. Then I opened my scene in Blender and I just imported the file as an FBX file. And as you can see, I now have my face imported with all the shape key values baked as keyframes. I can now apply this animation data to my own character. But in order for this to work, my character will have to have, I think it's around 42 shape keys, which you can get automatically using this great add-on called Faceit. It makes the creation of the shape keys super easy to do. I've been using the add-on for around two years and it's simply great. I'm in no way sponsored by Faceit, it's just a great add-on. Anyways, I copy the keyframes from my Rococo head over to my own character, but I get this error. And to fix this, you simply have to activate your keyframes by placing a keyframe on each of the shape keys. Then you can just copy the animation and paste it once again, and there you go. You now have facial motion capture for your character. If you have any jitter in your facial animation, it can be a good idea to delete some keyframes where there's jitter and then let Blender do the interpolation between these keyframes. This will get rid of most of the jitter. I personally did this a lot for the eyes because I experienced some jitter, but it is an easy fix and it only takes a couple of minutes. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. I'll see you in the next video.